Hello, my name is Andrea Bury, and I am the president of the Ontario Professional Planners Institute, better known as OPPI. I'm delighted to welcome you today to this Excellence in Planning Awards presentation for 2016. The Ontario Professional Planners Institute is, re is the recognized voice of the province's planning profession. Our more than 4,500 members work in government, private practice, universities, and not-for-profit agencies. We work in the fields of urban and rural development, community design, development, environmental planning, transportation, health, social services, heritage conservation, housing, and economic development. As professional planners, members must meet quality practice requirements and are accountable to OPPI and to the public to practice ethically and abide by a professional code of practice. Only full members are authorized to use the term Registered Professional Planner, or RPP. Province-wide, our planners, both public and private, urban and rural have the knowledge, the experience and the independent professional opinion needed to address a variety of complex situations while keeping the public interest clearly in focus. It's a challenge we planners embrace, providing leadership and accountability in areas of difficult or strategic healthy community planning and decision making. This is a critical time in our profession and we must reflect the highest ideals of public interest for the province of Ontario. I would like to now introduce our special guest, MPP Peter Milchin. Peter was first elected to the Ontario Legislature in 2014 as MPP for Etobicoke Lakeshore. Peter currently serves as the Parliamentary Assistant to the Minister of Economic Development, Employment and Infrastructure with a special concentration on infrastructure development. He also serves as Chair of the Toronto Caucus and Vice Chair of the Standing Committee on Finance and Economic Affairs. Peter has been a staunch advocate for his community. He has been a vocal champion for the expansion of public transit, planning reform and the provision of affordable housing. Very shortly, MPP Milchin will be introducing a private member's bill into the legislature to enact new public legislation that would make professional planners accountable to the government and to the people of Ontario, rather than only to OPPI and themselves. This proposed bill will raise awareness of the importance of planning and the role of the planning profession in creating and fostering healthy communities and sustainable environment. It is an exciting time for planners and all those involved in planning activities. Thank you to all of you for your continued support as OPPI pursues this very important advancement. Peter? Thank you, Andrea. Good morning. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here uh, with you today uh, on a very auspicious day when you'll be recognizing uh, some of the best practicing planners in our province. And I'm very proud uh, to be working with OPPI because day in, day out, uh, you ensure the, the integrity, uh, the honesty, and the high caliber of work of planners across this province in support of building the infrastructure that we need, expanding the communities that we have, uh, ensuring that decision makers have good professional advice to rely on and that the public can also rely on that advice as being well-informed, well-researched, and being honest. So uh, thank you very much for inviting me to participate with you today. Well, thank you very much, uh, MPP Milchin. It's great to have you here, and I know that you're going to help me in uh, this awards presentation, and uh, it is really a great opportunity for us to celebrate today. So today we're here to recognize and celebrate the year's best examples of planning. I have a distinct pleasure to announce and present the 2016 Awards for Planning Excellence. Planning in our communities is not and has never been a static profession. Growth and community development is a dynamic and evolving and it requires innovative, strategic and creative problem solving. OPPI's Excellence in Planning Awards recognize innovation, creativity, professionalism, plan, problem solving and communications in four categories. 
These awards afford us the opportunity to recognize advancements achieved in both planning and strategic thinking and to build upon them for the challenges of the next generation. World Town Planning Day is celebrated in 30 countries and four continents every year on or about November the 8th. And it's a time to recognize and to promote the role of planning in creating livable communities. We are pleased to be recognizing excellence in planning during this World Town Planning Week. This year's winners were chosen from many highly qualified and thoughtful entries. The awards jury had many excellent entries to evaluate and we thank the jury for their volunteer work in bringing us the best of the best. We have a number of awards to present this morning and the first award is in the category of urban and community design. The urban and community design category recognizes planners' contributions to the built form of our communities and includes planned, newly constructed, or renovated sites or areas. These projects we can all most readily identify with, I think, uh, because they deal with the spaces that we live in, that we work in, and that we play in on a daily basis. And I am pleased to announce that the winner of this award goes to Urban Strategies, for the University of Ottawa Master Plan. The University of Ottawa holds a prominent place nationally and internationally as one of Canada's leading universities. The campus master plan reimagines the University of Ottawa's network of open spaces, buildings, and infrastructure. It promotes efficient land use through compact, yet contact sensitive design within an integrated mobility network punctuated by iconic open spaces. It calls for the reestablishment of a grid of streets. Some are car free and others are shared and this provides a more seamless connection within the campus and within the wider community. Hubs containing amenities and recreational space together with enhanced landscaping are intended to make the campus more inviting and more memorable for students, for staff, but also for visitors. The key goal of the plan is to promote a stronger sense of attachment to the campus and a place not only to attend class, but also to stay and socialize, to eat, to sleep, to study, and to attend a sporting event or maybe enjoy some arts and culture. General campus design guidelines cover a range of topics including sustainability, public art, lighting, signage, and street furniture. The impact of the campus master plan has been recognized not only by OPPI with this award of excellence, but also for the guidelines and the precinct plan, but also the awards from the City of Ottawa, the Canadian Association of Landscape Architects, the Royal Architecture Institute of Canada, and the Canadian Institute of Planners. I'd ask Eric Turcott to please come forward to accept the award on behalf of your team. Nice. The next award is in the category of Municipal Statutory Planning Studies Reports and Documents. This category includes official plans, zoning bylaws, secondary plans, plans of subdivision, community improvement plans, and amendments to those statutory planning documents as per the Planning Act. This is probably the area of work that planners are most known for. Official plans and zoning bylaws planning the regulatory or the statutory documents that frame and implement our communities. I am pleased to announce that the winner uh, to be recognized in this category is Meridian Planning Consultants for Elg Incentives Community Improvement Program. In October of 2014, Elgin County initiated Elgin Incentives and retained Meridian Planning Consultants and TCI Management Consultants to assist. The goal was to develop a county-led framework that would allow Elgin to coordinate community improvement efforts across its seven local municipalities and to generally align community improvement tools with the county's economic goals and priorities. More specifically, the intent of Elg Incentives was to diversify the economic base and to support uh, the, uh, the creative rural economy with a focus on agricultural areas, tourism, and the downtowns and main streets. 
Early and ongoing consultation with local municipalities was an integral part of the process. The county committee of both the county and local municipal staff was established. The countywide framework has already received overwhelming uptake from the private landowners across all seven local municipalities. The implementation period was set for 10 years. On the basis of the success of the program, program to date, it is anticipated that the program will continue to have a significant positive impact on the physical and the economic environment across Elgin County. I'd like to ask Nick McDonald to come forward and please accept the award. The next award is in the category of research and new directions. The research category includes original studies, theses or reports that give evidence of a thorough examination of the problem using analytical methods that support original findings or solutions of value to the profession. I am pleased to announce that the winner of this is WSP MMM Group for the feasibility study for the expansion of Bike Share Toronto. Recognizing the growing demand for cycling and multimodal travel choices, the Toronto Parking Authority plans to expand the Bike Share Toronto network by 5,000 bikes and 500 stations over the next five years. To assist Bike Share Toronto and its funding partners, the TPA retained MMM Group to develop the feasibility framework for the system expansion. The framework is designed to assist Bike Share Toronto to identify areas of higher ridership potential, as well as to provide contextual information to facilitate system optimization and efficiencies. It formalizes the current understanding of contributing factors that impede or promote bike share ridership based on the study team's research into bikeability theory and lessons from bike share systems around the world. Bike share ridership is influenced by a wide range of factors. This study considers a relative value system of some of the most prominent factors raised in professional and academic literature on the topic. The Toronto Parking Authority was able to use the expansion phase to plan their network expansion and allocate resources for new station locations. I'd like to ask Aaron Baxter to please come forward to accept the award. The next award is in the category of communication and public education. This category includes written or published documents and audiovisual presentation material intended for use within or outside of the profession. This may include online information, technical booklets, publications, pamphlets, newsletters, brochures, audiovisual presentations, videos, workshops, and open houses. I'm pleased to announce that the City of Ottawa Planning and Growth Management Department is the winner of this award for the minimum parking review, The Movie. The City of Ottawa's zoning bylaw sets out requirements for parking to be included with all new development. By 2015, it became clear that these rules were in need of updating. The urgency was even greater given the city's huge investment into its new light rail transit system. Their goal was to eliminate parking requirements in many places with dramatic reductions in the rest of the inner city. As part of their public engagement strategy, they needed to, a way to introduce the project in an accessible and catchy format. More importantly, they had to quickly communicate why the parking rules needed to change significantly. The result was a 90-second cartoon movie that, produ that was produced in-house by city staff with a budget of zero dollars. The video focuses on broadly accepted and popular planning goals such as affordable housing, small business, compatible infill and pedestrian friendly urban neighborhoods. And then it explains how minimum parking rules prevent all of them. The video went on, uh, went live on the city's YouTube channel on, in October of 2015 and drew several, several thousand views in the first few weeks. 
It has since drawn attention from cities and transportation groups across North America and around the world. More importantly, it demonstrates that any planning topic can be discussed in a fun, engaging, and productive way. I would like to ask Tim Mormon to please come forward and accept the award on behalf of your team. <laughs> and our final award of the morning is a special, a special Healthy Communities Award to recognize um, the uh, the partnership that we have with the Heart and Stroke Foundation. And uh, it's a really important part of our planning uh, awards program. All submissions considered for this award must meet all of the requirements of OPPI's Excellence on Planning Award. In addition, the joint award, um, at least one or more of the following additional criteria needs to be met in the submission. Those criteria include, it facilitates a way in which communities can be healthier and more sustainable emphasizes the importance of sustainability, urban design, active transportation, green infrastructure in creating healthy communities. Or it explores the links between public health and land use planning and includes strategies for collaborating on tangible actions that result in healthier communities. I'm pleased to tell you that this year's winner of the Healthy Communities Award is WSP MMM Group for the feasibility study for the expansion of Bike Share Toronto. Again, I'd like to ask Eric, um, Aaron Baxter to please come forward. I encourage you to learn more about these outstanding examples of sustainable and healthy community planning in Ontario at our website, www.ontarioplanners.ca. In addition to announcing the Excellence in Planning Awards, I'm pleased to note that OPPI is releasing today a call for action that urges planners, other pr related professionals, the government, municipal departments, agencies and members of the public to make the public realm a focus of community building and placemaking efforts in Ontario. The public realm is comprised of publicly owned places and spaces that are accessible to everyone. These spaces are crucial to achieving healthy communities across Ontario as these are the places where civic life flourishes and where society intersects and where people are encouraged to interact. Well-planned public realm can increase pedestrian activity, enhance public safety, encourage private investment, and allow citizens to embrace and celebrate their places and spaces. The OPPI call to action challenges planners to explore and to consider key issues and actions surrounding different aspects of the public realm. These aspects include the changing role of parkland, we know that parkland provision has always been fundamental to the planning of Ontario's towns and cities. People need places to gather, to play and to socialize. Parks also frequently provide a sense of place for new neighbourhoods that help to organize and create a focal point for the community. As communities continue to intensify, a change in the way people use parks is also beginning to occur. While the role of parkland is changing, one thing remains clear. Parkland is an integral part of planning for vibrant, healthy places. The second item is planning for inclusiveness and removing barriers. Now more than ever, we need to consider inclusiveness and barriers in the planning and design of public realm. Factors such as safety, accessibility, age-friendly design all need to be considered. Ontario needs an approach to public realm planning that is based on good policy, planning principles, and data that will serve present and future generations. The next component is promoting active life and streetscapes.
The importance of the interface between mobility and land use needs to be recognized. The movement of people between buildings and neighborhoods, if planned properly, can create more livable communities. Streets are, for example, key components of the public realm in urban spaces. However, the primary function, form, and prevalence of, in cities and towns is often a means that are not considered a focal point or an area of importan importance in relation to the public realm and in design. We must acknowledge the importance of the pedestrian realm within streets, their associated streetscapes, and the relationship of the adjacent built form and land uses. The next component is reuse and multi-purpose function of our spaces and places. The term reuse and multi-purpose function of space refers to the reclaiming of underutilized places and spaces and re-energizing or bringing these back to life for community use. In other words, this is an adaptive reuse of public spaces and places and making them multifunctional can transform areas into vibrant community places that play host uh, to a range of year-round activities. Such spaces can also stitch together neighborhoods and isolated pockets of activities and create continuous and blended public spaces by filling gaps and connecting missing links. Public art. It's an important element when we talk about public realm because it animates and adds cultural, cultural expression to our streets, places, and cities. It can bring people together and also allows people to learn more about community's history, its significant events, and its culture. Well-designed and properly placed public art should become a meeting place for people, a landmark, uh, an identifiable asset within the community. Public art is an important piece of infrastructure that should instill a sense of place and a meeting to community fabric. The last component is the programming of the public realm. Programming is an overarching term that refers to design, policy, tools, and planning strategies with an objective of bringing people to a space within the public realm and enticing them to stay. The objective of programming is to create inclusive, comfortable public spaces that foster a sense of community and that develop connections amongst users. Planners and other stakeholders can build community through programming, design, and tactical urbanism uh, and by planning activities. All of these help to bring alive public realm spaces. The OPPI call to action encourages planners and other stakeholders uh, to explore and consider these issues and actions, the actions surrounding them during uh, the different uh, elements that we uh, undertake our, our work and focus in community building and placemaking in Ontario. I encourage you to learn more about the call to action and to download a copy from the OPPI website. I'd like to issue a special thank you to Eldon Theodore for his dedicated work on our public realm initiatives and I'm very pleased that he was able to be with us today. So thank you Eldon for all of your hard work. I would like to encourage all of you to attend another event. Next year's conference, the OPPI conferences are amazing and um, the 2017 conference is taking place at Blue Mountain Resort October 3rd to October 5th in 2017. This is the biggest event of the year and it will explore four key themes, management and leadership, infrastructure resiliency, ethics and professionalism, and conflict resolution. I really do hope to see you there. This concludes our press conference. Thank you again for, uh, for your attention and to many thanks to the jury uh, for their work in evaluating the uh, submissions. And again, congratulations to all of the award winners and the project teams who are behind those who accepted the, the awards. Congratulations on your innovative work on behalf of communities across Ontario. Thank you to the many volunteers who helped to create our call to action on the public realm. Please feel free to uh, help yourself to a copy of the press release. Thank you very much.